Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. So I've not done an open cup in a long time actually, but I've chosen to use a cookie cutter in the shape of a star. And I'm gonna use quite a large canvas. But first of all, I'm just going to coat my base in black. And then I'm gonna use a range of colors. I'll list these in the description below, but I'm basically using some violets, some gold, some iridescent blue green, some pearl lilac, ultramarine violet and violet cobalt. And I'm going to use those in my open cup, which is the cookie cutter shaped like a star. So as you'll see, I'm basically taking each color in turn starting with the gold and I'm layering those colors within the cookie cutter and what I'll do is I'll just kind of drag the cookie cutter along the base of the canvas and hopefully I'll be able to get a really good pattern. Now I'm using some different brands of paint. I'm using a range of Pebio, Arteza, Amsterdam and De La Rowney. And what I find is if I use a range of brands, that really helps me create cells and lacing. So that's one way that I can achieve my cells. So as you can see, I'm just dragging the first star across the canvas and it's already leaving a really pretty pattern. Now today I've mixed my paints with a pouring medium. I'm using Oatrol so that's the kind of the version of Floetrol that I can get here in the UK and I've mixed it one part paint three parts Oatrol and I've also added a little bit of water just to make it a little bit more fluid so as you can see as I fill the star up and I drag it along it leaves a really nice trace and I really love these colour combinations but as it travels and I rest it for a while, that's when the cells start to form. And that's how the paint and the Oatrol creates and reacts within that formula. I'm going to do this around three times. So I'm going to fill the star up with the combination of the colours, drag it across the surface. And then what I'll do is I will have a look at the design that it's created and I will start tilting that design out across the canvas. I really, really want to, and I intend to leave some negative space because I think having a black base with the, those colors on top will really make it pop and it will really stand out. So as I lift the star up once it's filled with the paint, I will gently just kind of raise it from the base and drag it along. I do that quite light handed, so I'm literally just releasing that paint as I drag it. Just slowly, there's no rush. And as I do that, I have a look at the pattern and the colours that it leaves behind. Just one more and I think that's it. So I'll just add a little bit more gold in and I will just lightly pick it up and drag it across the canvas. And then once I've done that, I will tilt. Let's have a quick look at a close up before we continue. Look at some of those cells that are popping up. I really love this color combination and that's really why I've called the shooting star because that design and pattern shoots all the way across the canvas from one end to another leaving a trace behind. So 
So to tilt this design, I'm having a look at where the layers of paint are and I really want to ensure that I do leave some of that negative space. So I do want some of that black to kind of shine through when it dries. So I'm going to just tilt off the first side. I'm near the end, one end, so that's good. I can kind of tilt that completely off. I'm very conscious that there's a gap the other end, so I will probably do something with that later just to ensure it's balanced. But I'm really happy with how some of these colours are now stretching out and shining through. It's really important for me to have done this because if I've left it as it was, I think there was too many puddles of paint in those areas. But it's really interesting to see how this design develops as you stretch it out because it really does change. let's have a quick look at a close-up wet version before I just continue and I stretch the other end out. I love these colours guys, I really love some of that detail as well that is formed within the middle and just having those parts black and remaining black on some of those edges I think really helps focus the eye into the middle of the piece and it almost gives it a space feel. Okay, I think I'm happy with this, so let's take you in for close-up. I just wanted to take that end off, just to kind of balance the other end, but I've maintained some of that negative space by keeping those two corners there with the black. And then we go round and through the detail. Those colours have not muddied at all, I'm really, really happy with this. And some of that detail just here, I'm really enjoying. I really hope this dries really well, so fingers crossed. It's quite a long canvas, so it was quite tricky to ensure that you could see all of those angles. But I hope it dries really well, and I'll take you in for a close-up. So here we go, dried version. So this is still on my table, but I'm going to hang it on the wall as well, just so you can see it the other way round. I'm so happy with how it dried. Um, yeah, I think... I really like that I've kept those corners as negative space but I can really see that blue green, that iridescent blue green really popping through. I think it can actually take a really different look and feeling depending on which way the piece of art is hung. So this is a portrait hanging. I showed you it on the table in landscape and yeah it's, it's totally different but I'm so happy with this and I had a lot of fun and I think using a different shape cookie cutter as my open cup was a lot of fun too. So I'll leave you with the dried result. Thank you so much for your time, thank you so much for your support, and I really hope to see you again soon. Have a great week everyone, and take care. Bye.